Alrighty, so as we do our close reading on these two problems, we're going to start with the first problem. And as we read through it the first time, I just want to think about what is the big idea. What is this problem asking us to do? Okay, and as we read through it, I want to just kind of think about our cube strategy of stuff that we might want to circle. Um, any, any mathematical words, any mathematical terms that we want to circle. Um, we want to underline what is the main problem, what is the problem asking us to solve, what is it asking for us to do, and we want to box any mathematical terms that we don't understand. So anything at all that we are either unsure of or we don't understand, put a box on it or highlight it so that we know to clear that up. And then we'll get to the rest of the steps later. So do you mind reading through for us, Fletcher? Yep. Thank you. Joe is thinking of an integer that is less than its opposite. The integer Joe is thinking of is, and the answers are less than zero, B is 0, C is between 0 and 1, and D is greater than 1. Wonderful, thank you. So what is the big picture here? What's being asked of us in this problem? Did anybody find something that we might be asked about in here? Why don't we do a second read-through on our own? And when we're going through the second read-through, I want you to try to underline the question that's being asked here. Underline what's being asked of us here. And so I'm looking through this. Joe is thinking of an integer. It's less than its opposite. It's not a question yet. Looks like all of us have underlined something at this point. So, Jennifer, what did you underline? The integer Joe is thinking of. Ooh, the integer Joe is thinking of is perfect. Okay, so that's kind of an incomplete sentence, right? It just says the integer Joe is thinking of is, and then we have four options down below. Um, did anyone take any time to circle um, any mathematical information or box anything that we don't understand? I see a box over here. What's what's the box on? What word is it? Um, integer. Integer? Okay. And did you use a box because it's a word that you're not sure about what it means? No, I boxed it because um, it really stood out. It stood out. Interesting. Okay. I, I appreciate that because if he's thinking of an integer and we're being asked to find that integer, then we should probably know what an integer is before we start trying to do this, right? Do we know what an integer is? Uh, Zach, you have an idea? Negative or a positive number, that is awesome. So an integer is either negative or positive. I'm just, what I do sometimes is um, I like to, when I annotate the box, I'll sometimes put a line out and just kind of put some notes that remind me what's, what's going on. There's no right or wrong way to do this. It's what makes sense to you. So for me, I just put a little note right here that says an integer and I put a minus sign and or positive, I abbreviate positive. That's just how I write it. I like you put plus or minus Fletcher, that makes mm -hmm. sense. I, I appreciate that. And you did the same thing there. Yeah, exactly. And I just want to clear up one thing, though. A negative or positive, you said a negative or positive number. Are integers allowed to be any kind of number at all? Yeah. So they're allowed to be, you're right, they're allowed to be negative and they're allowed to be positive. How about like 3.74? Is that an integer? Mm -hmm. It's not. Why not? It's not like decimals. Can't have decimals and integers. So I love how you got it started. It's positive or negative, and that's really important. But it's specifically a positive or negative. What do we call those numbers that don't have decimals? Whole numbers. Whole numbers. Perfect. So positive or negative or positive whole number. It's very good information. And this is what's so nice about being able to close read and understand each word here, because just this word, this one word integer. And from that, we're able to get even more information out of it. That implies that this is a positive or negative whole number. Very good. So Joe's thinking of an integer that is less than its opposite. What else did we circle or, or annotate that we want to share and talk about? Okay, yeah, I circled less than because mm. like, it's not saying that it's more than, like, it's saying that it's less than, so that stood out to me. So I knew like what to look for, and then like, not to look for something that's more than, but to, for something that is less than. 
That is awesome. That is very, very well said. So less than that. You're right. That compares two things, right? So, so which is is two less than four or greater than four? It's like a comparison, right? Um, what else? What else did we find in this text? Another word or something else? Opposite. Ooh, opposite. Did you circle or box? I circled. Okay. So then explain to us why you circled opposite. What's your name? You have there. All right. Because as Lindsay explained earlier. Uh -huh. As we circle less than, it also adds that it's less than its opposite. So we know that it can't be greater than its opposite. It has to be lower than that. Okay, so we have some integer, and we know that it's less than its opposite. So what are some examples of integers and their opposites? First off, are, are those both integers? Yeah. And how do you know? Because they are whole numbers. They're whole numbers, and they're both? Either a negative or positive. Either a negative or positive. Perfect. So check, they're integers. OK, and then how do you know that that's an opposite? Because one's a positive and one's a negative. And one's a positive and one's a negative. Awesome. So I feel like we have lots of information now. And we've circled things, we've underlined things, we've boxed things, and, we've, and everyone's clear now on what an integer is based on that annotation? Yes. I think it's time for us to evaluate. So we know that this person, Joe, is thinking of an integer, and he wants it to be, he's thinking of an integer that's less than its opposite. So let's see which one of these categories the integer Joe is thinking of falls into. Okay, so A, less than zero. What does that mean? It's Maybe negative. Maybe negative. Perfect. So less than zero. I'm going to circle that. I, it's sometimes fun to even annotate answers because then they put them in, in terms that maybe make a little bit more sense to us. So less than zero. I'm just making a note. That means negative. Okay. And then B, zero. We know what zero is. Just straight up zero. Right. Just straight up zero. Zero equals zero. Okay. Between zero and one. What does that mean? What kind of numbers are in between 0 and 1? Positive numbers? Definitely positive. Okay, so I'm going to circle this and I'm going to say definitely positive. Okay, but what else do we know about it if it's between 0 and 1? It would have to be a decimal. A decimal or a, or a fifth. <laughs> or a fraction, right. So decimal or fraction. Is that okay? Could this number be a decimal no. or fraction? No. no. Why not? Because it's an integer and it has to be a whole number. Yeah, I'm just straight up crossing out that answer because we just disqualified it. Okay. Okay. D greater than one. That means that it is more positive. 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 So there's positive, and you're right. It's also bigger than one, so it can't be mm -hmm. um, zero. Right. So let's see which one of these numbers makes sense. Okay. Can we look at B again? If it's B, if it's zero, if the number he's thinking of is zero. There can't, there can't be a negative zero. There's no such thing as negative zero. So if he's thinking of positive zero, negative zero, none of that makes sense, right? So can B be an answer? No. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're down to two. Okay, so is the integer that he's thinking of either less than zero or greater than one? It can't be. Can't be greater no, it, than one? No, it can't be A because it helps to talk it out, doesn't it? So we know he's thinking of an integer, and we know that the one that he's thinking of is less than its opposite. So in the case, the wonderful example you brought up, the positive one and negative one, which one would Joe be thinking of if he was thinking of the ones? Would he be thinking of the negative one or the positive one if it was less? Negative. Negative one. Okay, well, that works for one. I wonder about, like, the number four, negative four. If he was thinking about negative four or positive four, and he's thinking about which one's less, which one would he be thinking about? Negative, negative four. four. What's in common with these two? Because they're both the same, except, like, they're opposites. Right. So in both of those examples that we just talked about, he was thinking about which one both times. But if you add them to be both uh, positives and negatives, you get zero. You're, that's absolutely true. And in both of the examples, he was thinking of which one, negative one or positive one? 
Negative. And negative. And then negative four, positive four? Negative, negative four. So in both examples, he was thinking about which one? He was thinking about negative. The negative. So is the negative less than zero or greater than less one? Less than zero. So, which, zero. so which one's our answer? Eight. Eight. Perfect. I'm circling that real big. Does that make sense how we thought about that and broke that down piece by piece? Yep. Everybody on board? Yep. Can we do one more? Yeah, sure. Awesome. Can I get a different volunteer to please read the second part here? Thank you, Zach. Go for it. The perimeter of a square is 28 feet. What is the area of the square feet? Mm, interesting. Okay. So um, let's start with our, our close reading. I'm going to ask you to go ahead and read through that again on your own. And most of you are already doing this. I want to underline the question that's being asked. Let's box any words or terms that we don't understand. Let's circle any information that we find important. And feel free to start trying out this annotation like we did on the top one together. See if we can add some information. I can see some of us here circling the perimeter. What is perimeter? What does that mean? Did you annotate like that? Did you put a description of what perimeter is? No, Can you write a definition for us? And then we'll, once everyone's done with the, with the annotating, we'll share out and figure out which description makes the most sense to us. There might be different ones for different people, and that's fine. So I see, first off, almost everybody has the last sentence underlined. Why is that underlined? Because it's a question and um, it's, the, it's a problem to ask. Exactly. And what does it ask, Dad? Um, what is the area in square feet? What is the area in square feet? So what are our answer eventually should be a what? An area. An area. Exactly. Okay. So we want an area. Matter of fact, I'm going to even just circle the word area because I'm going to put a note that says this is of my answer. And that's just me telling myself, don't forget, you're looking for an area. So if your answer comes out as a distance, then you need to look at that again because you're looking for an area, right? Okay. What else did we circle or box in? Can we start with boxes, actually? Do we need to box anything? Perimeter buoy. Perimeter? Okay, perimeter. So and what was your question about perimeter? What was your, what was your thinking about perimeter? Um, I can't remember whether it was the outside of the box or what's inside the box. Ah, good call. The area is the inside and the perimeter is outside. Oh. Do we agree with that? Mm -hmm. yeah. I think you're right. And when you say the inside and the outside, specifically let's talk about the outside. What are you doing with the outside of this? Adding um, multiplying the right hand. Adding what? All the signs. All the signs, exactly. So perimeter, I'm going to put... Addition. Addition, excellent. You can put addition. Actually, why don't we all put that in our words or in our own words and then we we'll compare? Okay. Okay. Kenzie, what did you put for it? Um, for perimeter, I put um, adding, and I put an out an outside of a of a square unit or something that. Of an object. Of an object. That's perfect. Very good. Milka, what'd you put? Adding all the sides. Adding all the sides. That's exactly. Oh, I put the sum of all the sides, but that's the same thing. That's how I put it too. Jennifer, did you have something similar? Addition. Addition. So we know that we need to be doing some sort of addition, right? Um, yeah. Okay, but now it says the perimeter of a. What else did we circle? I circled square, and I also circled twenty-eight feet. Those are both key. What do you know about a square? Oh, it's, it's a shape. shape. You're absolutely right. And specifically, it's a type of shape that has what? All sides. All sides. All sides. Are, ooh, are equal. That's important too. That's important too. How many sides are there? Four. Four sides. Okay, so it's a shape with four sides, and all four sides are equal in length. Okay. And then you said you also circled the um, 28 feet, right? Yeah. Okay. And why'd you do that? I circle 28 feet because it's a key to let you know how how much 
it how much feet it is basically and it's and it kind of relates to the question what's the area in square feet mm, you're absolutely right so and this specifically says what is 28 feet okay um if if you do like add like the perimeter um, you can get that Okay, so it sounds like you're onto a strategy possibly, because 28 feet, according to that first sentence, the perimeter is how much? 28. I'm just putting feet equals 28 as a little reminder for myself, okay? So I have a question. If a square has four sides, and all four sides are equal, and the perimeter is 28 feet, how big is one side? So we know that side plus side what would be uh, 7 feet long Ooh, what are you doing right now? I divided uh, 20 by 4 and why'd you do that? because a square has 4 sides and uh, we needed to figure out how many like like divide it up into 4 pieces exactly right. what's that? 20 divided by 4 is? 7 and so the thinking that I was starting to go through here, and you're absolutely right, because you went straight to that multiplication and division. If we know that it has four sides, and they're all equal, then side plus side plus side plus side equals 28. So this means four sides equals 28. And if we want just one side, we can do what? Divide. Divide by four. And whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to reduce it to the other. And four divided by four, is just going to be 1, so that's one side equals 28 divided by 4, which is 7. So this is great because now we have a side of a square. A side is 7 feet. How is that going to help us find the area? What is the area? The inside, exactly. Should we draw a picture? Let's do that. I'm going to draw a picture of a square. And we know that each side is how long? Seven. Seven. Let's go ahead and label them all. Okay. And we confirmed that if we add them all, we got 28, right? That's how we designed that. But now area, how do you find the area? How do you find the inside, the part, the shaded region in here? How do you find that? Remember back to area? Do we remember finding the area of a rectangle or a square? Base times height, length times width. Does that, that ring a bit of a bell? Seven times, yeah. seven. seven times seven, right? So with a rectangle, it's either length times width or base, base times height, whichever you want to say. I'm going to say L times W, length times width. But in our case, this is a very special rectangle where both the length and the width are the same. So our area equals seven times seven. 49. 49 is the number. And what kind of units are they? According to the text, it reminds us that we're finding this in Not just feet, but square, 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 feet. Feet. square feet. So you can either write that with feet and then a little squared symbol, or you can write out squared feet. Um. 49 square feet. Perfect. And does that kind of make sense? How we start with just this big picture of you're told you're not told anything about the area. You're in fact you're not even told about the sides. You're just told the perimeter and the type of shape and the measurement. And from that, you take a step back and you extract all the mathematical information that you can piece by piece, and soon you can draw conclusions about the rest. Make sense? Yep. Yeah. Very good. Thank you guys for participating. I appreciate it.